Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online role video with me Sherman. Today guys we're taking a look at the Tempest Barbarian and its healer role and I'm going to show you how it's set up with that with the attribute points, the um, skills that I use and the CP setup. The gear is pretty much going to stay the same. Now remember everything in, that I'm showing you here is just suggestion. You do not have to play it this way. If you so choose you can. Now Another disclaimer here, this is more of a roleplay build, this is not an in-game build, this is not designed to play score runs. It is designed to play the content of the game. So, alright, let's go ahead and jump into it. Taking a look at the character, we are the Tempest Barbarian, the Nord Sorcerer. Max, uh, we have 64 points into Magicka. That's pretty much what all you're going to change most of the time is between Magicka health and stamina, depending on what role you're playing. And as you can see, we have 28k Magicka, 21k health, 21k stamina, 1576 mag recovery, 946 stamina recovery. Our weapon damage on the front bar is 2539 with a 34% critical. We mainly use the front bar... Uh, with the stamina weapon just to cast certain abilities uh, for benefit and that's it the back bar is where we're going to do most of our healing that's where the resto staff is and this is what it looks like when you're on the resto staff 29 percent spell critical 1493 spell damage but when you have your power pot going you go to 1786 spell damage with 29 percent spell critical 1689 mag recovery now moving on down here, we are using Tristat food. You can use Dubious Cameron Throne or Witch Mother's, or sorry, Witch Mother's Potent Brew with this, but the problem is, is that it does lower your your max resources a lot, and it's going to make your heals less effective. But it does take your magic recovery up to a higher amount when fully buffed, as you can see. So that is up to you if you want to play that way. This is something that maybe you would want to use when you're dungeon running. Um, in normal or doing even maybe even some normal trials doing overland that kind of thing like running it this way I, I really wouldn't want to run this this way in a in a veteran dungeon or trial um, th that's because I already know that that's a really low resource pool you have really good magic recovery but your heals are gonna be really small with that <laughs> so that's why I like to use stick to try stat food with this build on pretty much everything. Stamina, DPS, um, and tank and healing. Like, I just prefer the try stat with it. As you can see, though, it doesn't change our magic recovery. By a super large amount, a lot of people will say that that's a, a pretty big chunk. I don't think it's too bad. Um, I can still get by. Plus, I know how to use the heavy attack advantage with rest of staff. Um, so... As you can see, our spell resist is lower and our physical resist is lower than when we are a tank or even a damage dealer. We are using the Atronach Mundus Stone to give us more magic or recovery and again, try stat food. Going over here to this, the, the rest of it, we are using the spell power pots. This is going to give you magic back. It's also going to give you major intellect, increasing magic recovery. It's also going to grant you major sorcery and major prophecy. We do have major prophecy all the time because we do have inner light on our bar to boost our max magicka. Um, this is primarily just to boost our spell damage to make our heals hit for a little bit more. Now, just like our tank and damage dealer, this roll is using still... The Storm Fist set, this gives you stamina recovery, and then when you deal damage, you have a 10% chance to deal, uh, or to create a Thunder Fist to crush your enemies, dealing 2,161 shock damage every one second for three seconds to all enemies within four meters, and the final 10,480 physical damage when the fist closes. This effect can occur once every eight seconds. That's going to happen no matter what. The next thing is Storm Masters. This is a stamina-based set. But as you can see, it increases your weapon critical by 833 and 833 and your weapon damage by 129. When you deal critical damage with a fully charged heavy attack, your light attacks deal an additional 1746 shock damage for 20 seconds. The reason I like this set, especially for this particular build, is because you can still take advantage of that damage output from these two sets, even as a healer, because you can do a heavy attack with a two-handed weapon. And if you crit, 
everything you do after this, every light attack you throw is going to do extra shock damage. As you can see, the Storm Fist and the Storm Master is going off there. So Storm Masters is going to give you extra damage. And even if you heavy attack, you can light attack right afterwards and get the Storm Masters to go off. So it's really nice, and it does give you a greater chance of doing applying Concussed. So Storm Master is really good for that. Now, the next set we're using, we are still using Thunderbugs. Um, Two-piece adds physical resistance, three-piece spell resistance, four-piece spell damage, and then the five-piece, when you take physical damage, you have a 50% chance to deal 6,759 shock damage in a five-meter radius around you. This effect can occur once every three seconds. It's non-stop. If you're taking damage, this thing is just going to keep firing. Um, also, just a reminder on Storm Fist and the Storm Masters. Storm Masters, you have to deal critical damage with a fully charged heavy attack. So even if you do this, if this happens to crit at all when you heavy attack, like that, now you still get Storm Masters. It, you can get, get it either from this, from heavy attacks from this, or heavy attacks from this. And all you have to do is crit. And as soon as you crit, it will reapply that lightning bonus you can see it down here on the, the the bottom of the screen if i heavy attack you'll see the timer if it goes back yeah it just reapplied itself so every time you crit it's going to reapply that buff to you for the storm masters it's going to allow you to do that extra damage this is just basically help you clear like if i know a lot of people don't understand this but if you're farming sets and you're trying to help somebody get a monster set you're trying to help them get a set in particular and your group just doesn't have a healer available or a tank available that's why i make these characters work this way so you can help people get the sets they need either from overland from dungeons from delves from world bosses whatever they need help with you can play a role to help them get those things because you can't always solo everything um, a lot of people would like to imagine they can solo every world boss in the game, and you can, but unless you're a highly skilled player, like Andy S., or like myself, who understands the mechanics of encounters really well, especially world boss encounters, we have no problem soloing these things. And that's because we take the time to learn how to play our characters really well. <laughs> so, and yeah. So that's why I use the, I, I just keep the sets the way they are and I just swap things around because I, I still know how, how well this can work, even like this. Now, looking at the, the, the tr enchants on the gear, we are using three tri-stats with three invigorating here. This is how we can get that higher mag recovery and stam recovery for the character if we need it. And it works out really good. <laughs> now, this... Um, the Tri-Stats is going to help you play that more hybridized character. And then on those smaller pieces, we do have Max Stamina with Divine. So we can take advantage of Mundus Stones, like the Atronach Mundus Stone, or the Thief Mundus Stone, or whatever Mundus Stone we need to, we can still take advantage of it and still gain the benefits of it, plus other benefits on top of it. Now moving on to our... Uh, Jewelry traits, we are using two Trirune with weapon damage. I know uh, you're probably thinking, well, I'm a healer. I need to have higher spell damage. This is for just when you're playing this character as a tank or damage dealer. That's it. The benefits of the Thunderbugs, the spell damage, is when you play a healer or if you want to take advantage of some spell damage in your character, depending on what you're doing. Like, I do have a Nernhone Axe, two-handed axe, that I do use, so I can take advantage of magic damage when I'm on the front bar so I can use like lightning uh, like lightning spells or I can use the, the the execute lightning spell and this is mostly for when I'm questing so that's why I run this setup the way I do and then also on the jewelry we have like I said the two weapon damage then we have one infused with a mag recovery this is going to allow us to play that healer role really well and then on the weapons, we are using a two-handed maul with a crusher enchant and fuse. This is going to allow us to apply crusher to enemies for our group to help just debuff enemies and to improve the group's DPS overall. Now, a lot of times it's going to be the tank doing this, but you can still help the tank by applying crusher yourself. If they have, unless they're using... Um, I forget the name of the set now. I just went brain dead. But unless they're using this, this one specific set that increases your enchant capabilities, you're, you guys can keep 
uh, Crusher up together really effectively. Now on the back bar, we are using a weakening enchant on a powered resto stuff. Because we don't have a high spell damage, we want to take advantage of the powered effect to boost our healing done. So that's why we have that. And then moving on to the skills, guys. <clears throat> Always remember class skills. Take the skills that are going to best reflect, reflect your ability to play your character effectively in any situation, whether you're a tank, a healer, or damage dealer. And I always unlock now, for me, all skills, active abilities, and passives for my class so I can take advantage of all the different skills and tools available to me depending on what role I choose to play. In the case of healer, I have the skills on the bar I like to use, and I also have some extra ones unlocked in case I want to use them. Now, we are using a two-handed weapon. You can use any of the two-handed abilities if you so choose. Um, I'm not using any of them because I don't need to. I know how to play this character really well. I've played it for a long time as a tank, uh, something similar to this, and I've just mastered the ability. So I, I don't really need the two-handed for the front bar to do any of the abilities because I'm going to take advantage of some of the other ones. And restoration staff, make sure you unlock all the passives and skills because, again, you never know if you're going to need them. Now moving on to the armor. Light armor is going to be really good for you in this effect because you're going to be able to take advantage of evocation, which is the magic recovery and the reduced magic cost in this case. The medium armor passives, you're really not going to need, but you can still take advantage of them because you are using a stamina-based weapon on the front bar. And you do have a 22k stamina. It's not a whole lot, but it's enough to apply certain effects if you need to, like, you know, the Crusher Enchant, or if you need to block or dodge roll, you have those resources there for that purpose. And with the way this character's set up, you can save a lot of resources with dodge rolling. And then blocking is just blocking. <laughs> Heavy armor, you will take advantage of many of these passives, like the Max Health, the Constitution passive, and Resolve. And then Soul Magic, Unlock the passives and abilities that best fit your playstyle. Uh, Soul Summons is one I always unlock, no matter what. Allows you to revive once every hour without spending a Soul Gem. And then Soul Lock, killing an enemy with weapon ability has a 10% chance of automatically filling an empty Soul Gem. Um, yeah, really good. Now moving on, Fighter's Guild. Unlock all the skills and, and passives, so this way when you're playing as a damage dealer or even as a healer, you can take advantage of some of the skills. Mage's Guild. Again, I take advantage of all the different skills and passives depending on what role I'm playing. Depending on what content I'm playing on, I might use any one of these. Sedgic Order, same thing. Unlock all the passives and skills based on what I like to use for me as a play, as my play style. Everyone's going to play differently. Everyone's going to have their own opinions on what's better and what's not. Undaunted, same thing. Unlock all the passives and active abilities. The active abilities are all synergies, and you can never have enough synergies so it's always good to have synergies in your group moving on to assault unlock the pa the skills here that you are going to best reflect your ability to play same thing with passives the nice thing is you can still take advantage of vigor even with this setup because you can still heal your allies for 7262 health over five seconds so if you wanted to you could even put vigor on the front bar moving on to nord skills and the racials uh, re revealer increase the your your experience gain with two-handed weapons by two, 15 percent also increase the duration of any consumed drink by 15 minutes so like which mother's potent brew and dubious camera throne or even our tam takeaway broth or um sit clockwork citrus filet those ones i believe are also considered drinks so that you can take advantage of those i i want to say they are i don't I'm not 100%. Resist Frost increases your max health by 1,000 and your cold resistance by 2310. Cold resistance is primarily based off your spell resistance. Uh, gain immunity to shield status effects. And then Stalwart increases your max stamina by 1,500. And when you take damage, you generate 5 ultimate. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds. The nice thing about Nords is no matter what you're doing... <coughs> As a tank, you're going to take damage. As a damage dealer, you're going to take damage. As a healer, you're going to take damage. You cannot deny your character taking damage. This is great for that. <laughs> because you're always going to start generating an ultimate. 
Uh, Rugged is really good. Increase your physical and spell resistance by 3960. This is how we can get higher resistances out of this character along with the gear set that we're running. Alchemy, medicinal use, always good. When using potions, resulting effects last 30% longer. And then provisioning Gorman and Connoisseur, both of these make your food durations last 20 minutes longer. And with being a Nord, you get another 15 minutes on top of it. That's a 35 minute increase on drinks. <clears throat> All right. So now, moving over the skills on our bar, starting with the first bar. And most of these skills on the front bar are, are floatable. So the first three are, the last two you've got to leave, and the ultimate's floatable. So starting with the first ability, we have Lick, Lightning Flood. Um, I like Lightning Flood because it has a greater radius than Liquid Lightning. So I just like it. And also, they give, that means they have an easier time of synergizing off of it. The next ability we have is Ring of Preservation. This is a brand, uh, the Earth at your location with a Rune of Protection for 20 seconds. You and your allies in the area have their cost of Roll Dodge reduced by 20% and your main uh, you gain minor protection and minor endurance, reducing your damage taken by 8% and increasing your stamina recovery by 10%. This just helps your, just helps you overall. Because, I mean, even that, that higher stamina recovery for you means you're going to get resources back quicker for dodge rolling and blocking if you need to. Um, back to Lightning Flood. Just so you know, it does damage over time. Uh, it does 2,382 uh, shock damage to enemies in the area every one second for eight seconds. And any ally standing within the Nexus can activate the Conduit Synergy, dealing 7,208 shock damage to enemies around them. And they can synergize off of it. The next ability we have is Harden Ward. We have this here because we are using a pet, and this is going to give us a great way to keep us and the pet alive um, in that sense. So, as you can see, Conjure Globes of Daedric Energy for protection, granting a damage shield for you and your pets that absorb 10,619 damage for 6 seconds. Um, damage shield strength is capped at 50% of your max health. As you can see, that is exactly 50% of our max health, if you didn't know that. And then moving on, we do have the Summon Twilight Matriarch. Call on an Azura to send a Twilight Matriarch to fight but at your side. The Twilight Matriarch's Zaps deal 3,865 shock damage, and its Kicks deal 3,381 shock damage. Once summoned, you can activate the Twilight Matriarch's special ability, causing it to heal the, the Matriarch and up to two other friendly targets for 6,449 health. The Matriarch remains until killed or unsummoned. Next ability in our bar is Inner Light. We have this here for the increased max resources of Magicka. This gives us 5%, and then with the passive, we get 7% total. So we actually get a 7% increase on our max Magicka, 1% less than what we could get from our own class's buff ability. And then moving on, we have Replenishing Barrier. Now this is a really good one, because this one creates a damage shield that does 32,978 uh, damage. It'll absorb. But each time the ward dissolves off somebody, you restore 6 ultimate and 428 magicka. This is just easier for you to sustain with. And it's an oh crap button. <laughs> On the back bar, where our resto staff is, we have healing springs. As you can see, this heals a target area for 1708 health and an additional 1708 health every 1 second for 3 seconds. It also restores 338 magicka for each friendly target hit by the initial heal up to a maximum of three targets. Then we have Combat Prayer. This is just a burst heal. Also grants minor Berserk and minor Resolve and minor Ward, reducing or increasing your allies damage by 8% and their physical and spell resistance by 1320 for eight seconds. Next ability we have is Quick Siphon. Now this one is also, a, I consider a floater ability. You can put something else here, but this one focus your staff's power to apply minor lifesteal to an enemy. Uh, for 20 seconds, healing you and your allies for 719 health every second when you damage them. So for you, it's going to be really good, especially the fact that you're going to be doing this. Oops. You're going to be doing this. And then you're going to be heavy attacking a lot to get your resources back. And when you do, like I said, you're going to be able to get the Storm Master effect so you can light attack. And then even if you're up close, you can still do that, light attack. And have your pet and your shields and all that going on so you can do that and then if you need to heavy attack you can swap bars heavy attack and heal and do all that stuff it's it works out really effectively 
um, really well. So, all right. And then, of course, we do have our Twilight Matriarch here again to give us increased heals and stuff. And then uh, Inner Light is here for the Max Magicka. And then we also have Aggressive Warhorn. This is to boost your group's Max Magicka and Stamina by 10% for 30 seconds. You and your allies gain major force, increasing critical damage by 15% for 9 seconds. So, overall, nice little setup here. And just to show you guys a little bit more, I am going to go over the CP really quick for this and then I'm going to take it into a dungeon. Starting with the red tree, we have 66 in the ironclad, reducing your damage taken by direct damage attacks by 22%. We do have two into medium armor focus, one into spell shield. Uh, this gives you 209 extra physical resist for wearing five pieces of medium armor. This gives you an extra 105 spell resist. Um, we had three points left over, so I felt they would work best there. We have 56 in the thick skin, reducing your damage taken from damage over time effects by 20%. 43 in the hardy, reducing your damage taken from physical poison disease damage by 10%. And 43 into elemental defender, reducing your damage taken from flame frost shock and magic damage by 10%. Moving on over here, we have 40 into bastion. This increases the effectiveness of damage shields by 16%, and then 19 into quick recovery, increasing your healing received by 5%. Since we are going to be up more up close within fights we want to have that higher um, healing received moving on over here we have 40 in the warlord reducing the cost to break free by 16 percent 16 in the sprinter reducing the cost to sprint by 10 percent 16 in the bashing focus reducing your bash cost by 10 percent and then moving over here we have 75 in arcanus increasing your mag recovery by 14 percent 43 into tenacity increasing your your magic and stamina your fully charged heavy attacks by 10 percent and then over here, we have 40 into Tumbling, reducing your dodge roll cost by 16%, 40 into Shadow Ward, reducing your block cost by 16%. Now over here, I kind of hybridized it because I do use both Magicka and Stamina when I play this. Um, sometimes I, I like to use more weapon damage abilities on the front bar so I can still push a little bit of DPS with my group to help clear things faster. So 43 into Bless, this increases your healing done by 10%. 23 into Elfborn, increasing your critical healing and critical damage, magic damage done by 10%. And then 43 into Elemental Expert, increasing Flame Frost Shock and magic damage by 10%. Remember, Sorks get 5% physical damage increase and 5% shock damage increase. So take, take advantage of it. 16 into Staff Expert, this increases your light and heavy attacks with Destruction Stabs and Resto Stabs by 10%. 16 into Physical Weapon Expert, increasing your light and heavy attacks with all stamina weapons by 10%. And then 40 into Master at Arms, uh, increasing your damage done with direct damage by 16%. Now before anyone asks, can I use a Lightning Staff instead of a two-handed? Yes, you can use the Lightning Staff if you so choose. Remember, everything in this video is just suggestion. Moving on. We have 43 in the Mighty, increasing your physical poison disease damage by 10%. 23 in the Precise Strikes, increasing your critical damage and critical healing with stamina abilities by 10%. And then 23 in the Thaumaturge, increasing your damage done with damage over time effects by 10%. And that is the CP setup for the healer role. Now, I am going to show you guys this in a dungeon. Of course, we're going to go to my favorite little dungeon for testing right now, Depths of Malatar. And I'm going to show you guys how this will work in a dungeon setting um, when you're playing in a group, basically showing you its effectiveness of its heals and its healing effect. Um, it is subpar. Like I said, it is not going to be the greatest healer. But if you know how to play it, you can keep a group alive fairly efficiently. I wouldn't say super effectively, but fairly efficiently. Enough to get content done on normal and veteran mode. Especially base game dungeons, maybe some DLC dungeons, and again, some trials, if not all trials, if you're a highly skilled player with this character. Alright, so just like with anything, I'm going to run in here, I'm going to use my potion first, so this way I can get my potion buff going. And I can gain that extra Max Magicka. I'm going to go ahead and summon my, my pet real quick. Wow, I didn't even mean to do that. And I still died. 
because I was trying to hit my sh my shield button, but I had the, the for some reason it just kept throwing lightning out, and I didn't tell it to. So that was my bad. I, I kind of sucked at that. Let me go back over here and retry this again. It does work out really well. So summon pet. I'm gonna go ahead and do my shield first. I'm gonna throw a uh, lightning flood. And then I'm gonna throw this out. Now I can't even get my abilities to work. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and pop my shield. Get my potion going. And please remember, this is veteran mode. That's why it's taking me a lot longer to kill these guys and to put them down. Because my character is designed to be a damage dealer, not technically a healer. So... There we go. And that is that for this <laughs> healer little tutorial thing so you guys can see it does work it's not like I said it's not gonna be super efficient this thing works way better as a tank and a damage dealer than it does a healer and I will be doing this with later builds I will be doing just like if this build can be a tank and healer better than it can be a healer or a tank and damage dealer better than it can be a healer I'm not even gonna worry about showing healer roles I'm just gonna do that um, I will be making another video today kind of explaining some things, uh, giving you guys a heads up on a few changes I will be making uh, to the way I do my videos. So, But that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys liked it. I hope it was a kind of explanatory um, in the way it works, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So you guys know what's coming next. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can subscribe. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day, and this guy might see you in-game. Bye.